Frontierland. It is here that we experience the story of our country's past. The color, romance, and drama of frontier America as it developed from wilderness trails to roads, riverboats, railroads, and civilization. A tribute to the faith, courage, and ingenuity of our hearted pioneers who blazed the trails and made this progress possible. These were the very spoken words that made up Walt Disney's dedication of Frontierland in July of 1955. And since then, the American frontier has had a lasting presence at Disney's theme parks. The Old West is a defining chapter in American history, and as such, it is inconceivable to take a stroll through Frontierland and miss the sights and sounds of an attraction that defines the epitome of the American frontier, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. So hang on to your hats and glasses as we descend into the story behind the wildest ride in the wilderness. Walt Disney had created Disneyland with the intent of upholding wholesome American values that he himself had long cherished throughout his life. Dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America, the American way of life came to be immortalized in the park's lands. The small town, turn of the century charm of Main Street, USA. The ambitious promise of the future in Tomorrowland. But nowhere was this more true than in Frontierland, a section of the park with its lens of focus looking back at America's past and folklore. Walt Disney World continued this trend when it opened in October of 1971, capturing the same rare lightning in a bottle that Disneyland had done 16 years prior. As successful and popular as the new park in Florida became, one iconic attraction was noticeably absent from within the berm of the Magic Kingdom. To set Disney World apart from Disneyland, the company decided against bringing the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction to the Florida park. Disney believed that because of the state's rich history with pirate folklore, and its relative proximity to the Caribbean, meant that guests would probably be more interested in exploring experiences less familiar to them. Thus, Disney decided to expand the park's existing Frontierland section with a unique and visionary concept not seen at Disneyland. Spearheaded by Mark Davis, that concept was Thunder Mesa, an area of Frontierland that included several proposed attractions, including a runaway mine train, hiking trails, a mule ride, and a marquee e-ticket attraction known as the Western River Expedition. Much like Pirates of the Caribbean, the Western River Expedition was designed to operate in the same mold as the swashbuckling escapade. Guests would travel through western settings, encountering cowboys, Native Americans, wildlife, and even bandits committing a holdup, all in audio-animatronic form. Unfortunately for Disney, their earlier bet on a pirate band did not pay off, and the company was hit with a rash of complaints regarding the absence of Pirates of the Caribbean at the new park. The public was fervishly adamant about bringing Walt Disney's classic attraction eastward, and eventually Disney gave in to the demands. With existing funds being directed now to the combined construction efforts of Pirates of the Caribbean and Space Mountain, as well as economic problems caused by the nation's oil crisis at the time, Thunder Mesa was left to gather dust on the Blue Sky drawing board. Years later, both Disneyland and Walt Disney World found themselves introducing more thrill rides within their gates. One such experience was a new thrill attraction for Frontierland, thought up by Imagineer Tony Baxter. He adopted the runaway mine train from Thunder Mesa and transformed it into Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Construction began on Big Thunder Mountain in the late 1970s, with Disneyland's version beginning earlier than Walt Disney World, since the latter required a remodification of the Rivers of America waterway to support the mountain's massive footprint. The introduction of Big Thunder Mountain necessitated the replacement of Disneyland's mine train through Nature's Wonderland attraction. However, Imagineers made sure that elements of the Nature's Wonderland Railroad remained intact. In fact, the town of Rainbow Ridge, where guests would pass by in the original attraction, was refitted to allow the new Big Thunder Mountain trains to pass through the town. The Florida version took advantage of Walt Disney World's spacious land, and was designed as slightly longer and faster than its Disneyland cousin. Eventually, after using over 4,000 gallons of paint, 4,600 tons of concrete, and 6,500 tons of steel beams, the once flat plots of land within the parks were transformed into the stunning mountain ranges that Disney Park guests enjoy today. 
Big Thunder Mountain Railroad debuted at Disneyland on September 2nd, 1979, with the attraction opening at Magic Kingdom the following year on November 15th, 1980. Tokyo Disneyland and Disneyland Paris added their versions on July 4th, 1987 and April 12th, 1992 respectively. Frontierland is non-existent at Hong Kong Disneyland, and instead Grizzly Gulch takes its place. Opened in July 2012, the similarly themed land is home to an attraction with a mouthful of a name, Big Grizzly Mountain Runaway Minecars. Inspired by the natural settings of Yellowstone National Park and the Sierra Nevada Mountains, Big Grizzly Mountain is also home to a runaway mine train coaster, serving as a long-distance cousin of Big Thunder Mountain. So whatever happened to Mark Davis's grandiose Western River Expedition idea? Sadly, it never came to fruition, although elements of the Western River Expedition went on to inspire Imagineers to honor it within segments of other theme park attractions, such as Tom Sawyer Island, World of Motion, Living with the Land, and Phantom Manor. Most people assume that Big Thunder Mountain is simply a runaway mine train through a western setting. But the attraction actually holds a backstory that is more complex than just a wild, out-of-control train ride. During the gold rush of the late 19th century, the town of either Rainbow Ridge, or Tumbleweed, or Thunder Mesa, depending on the park, became a thriving mining settlement after fortune was struck within Big Thunder Mountain. An East Coast tycoon named Barnabas T. Bullion, who has an uncanny resemblance to a certain Imagineer, established the Big Thunder Mining Company and laid out a network of mine trains in an effort to transport the vast amounts of ore. The site, however, turned out to be sacred Native American ground, and the more the settlers abused the mountain for its resources, the more trouble they faced. Strange occurrences such as trains moving by themselves, equipment failures, and cave-ins plagued the miners, until finally the mining town was ravaged by a natural disaster, which led to its ultimate abandonment. Some time later, the mine trains were found to be still running on the tracks without any operators. The site was then transformed into a tourist spot where people would be able to ride the seemingly sentient trains. Every individual Big Thunder Mountain was inspired by locations found throughout the western parts of the United States, such as Utah's Bryce Canyon National Park and Arizona's Monument Valley. The ride experience is similar in each park. Guests board a mine train that holds approximately 30 people. The attraction has three lift hills located throughout the track's course, with each hill leading the passengers into a different series of mild yet erratic turns and drops through the Rocky Mountain. The train winds through caverns and tunnels, bypassing geysers, small audio-animatronic animals, unearthed fossils, and abandoned buildings. After braving the perils of Big Thunder Mountain, the trains return to the main station. The attraction at Disneyland Paris has a unique feature about it that separates it from the rest of the three mountains, in that the mountain is situated on an island. To reach the mountain, guests board the train on the mainland and cross the river through an underwater tunnel, returning to the mainland in the same way. It seems almost appropriate that an attraction devoted to the American West of long ago has such a prolonged and arduous history. Appropriate in that it parallels the difficult journey that trailblazers, driven by their infallible and determined spirit, had to undergo to traverse the rugged landscape of the American frontier. Big Thunder Mountain has gone on to personify and imbue the wild and valiant spirit of those who left their extraordinary stamp on the American story. <laughs>